Today I'm here at Willenstein Castle, or Castle Ruins, and there's a good chance if you're living in America, you've never heard of this place. Even if you're living in the Ramstein area, or the Kaiserslautern area, you probably still have never heard of this place. And that's because there are tons of castles in Germany, and of course Europe. Back when I was living in the United States, I could only imagine what it was like to visit a castle. However, if you were to tell me that there were tons and tons of castles literally lost in the woods, in the hills, and in the mountains, I wouldn't believe you. To me, that was something like fairy tale movie stuff. But after having lived here, it's kind of crazy to imagine, but there are actually thousands of castles. How many castles specifically? Well, according to Deutsche Welt, which is a German publication and the European Castle Institute, there are over 25,000 castles. There are so many castles lost in time that they can't actually count them all together. And while that sounds like a lot, it really is a lot, considering Germany's the size of Montana, even so, only 20% of them still have their roof intact. So that would mean that most of these castles are actually castle ruins. But, you know, rest assured, they're still really awesome to take, spend some time with, and uh, just really experience. One of the reasons why Germany has so many castles is because back in the days of the Holy Roman Empire, it was made of countless, countless kingdoms that came and went. It wasn't until 1871 that Germany was actually unified as a single country, a country that we would recognize today. In actuality, when you think about it that way, Germany's actually younger by nearly 100 years than the United States. So with 5,000 castles that are still intact, you know, what's their purpose? Well, first and foremost, they are historic attractions, right? Um, they'll always be like the centerpiece of the village or the city that they kind of rest in. But a lot of them have restaurants, bars, and even some of them are made up into hotels now. And the really cool part is that some of these castles, like for example, Berg Elts, are actually owned by the original family that built the castle. So the history is generational and it goes back hundreds of years. Now, what about the castle ruins, right? Like, what do they offer? Well, they're just a cool place to spend the day. Um, you know, you can use them as awesome backdrops for photo opportunities. Uh, they make great playgrounds for kids when you have nothing else to do and the weather's doing good. And then if nothing else, like if you just want some solitude and you want to spend some time in a very mystical and magical kind of place, you know, these castles are hard to beat. Now, what I like to do is I'll jump on Google Maps, which is kind of surprising because you would think they'd be able to tally up the number just off of that. But just if I have nothing else to do and I'm in a random area, type in Berg, B-U-R-G, that's the German word for castle, and you'll be surprised to see how many pop up all around you. Berg Ruina is going to be castle ruins, so they're not going to be fully you know, fully intact anymore, but they're still probably free to enter and free to explore. And often uh, they don't draw the big crowd. So you can usually have the place to yourself for a picnic, or share a bottle of wine. Uh, outside of that, you can also try Schloss. Schloss is the German word for fortress. Those are also peppered around everywhere. And, you know, seeing these castles wow. lost in the woods, lost in the mountains, etc. you know, you really get to see why Germany was the land of thousands of kingdoms. This place has a lot of history and you can't look past it because it's everywhere in your face. So continue to explore and make experiences while you're here in the country, while you're here in Europe. There's so much beyond your doorway.